do you believe is Torah? Torah is the first five books of Moses. But how, that's not written by Moses. Uh, I believe it is. It's I'm not, not trying to debate, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it is, uh, just from our old tradition. And yeah. not, we, I would say this for certain, we don't have the actual physical copy that Moses wrote. Mm -hmm. But we have copies of the physical copy that Moses wrote. So I believe that we still have the same Torah. Um, but yeah, yeah. for example, in Numbers 15, 15 to 16, it tells you that there's no difference between a converted Jew and there's no difference between a actual quote unquote ethnic Jew. We see the same sentiment in Esther chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. These people converted to Judaism and they were known as Yahad, Jews. I mean, so I don't see a difference. They won't be servants, nothing like that. Um, but yeah. So, so, okay. So, you know, going back to the source, which is the books. So, um, it says Moses died in the land of Moab. Now, who wrote this? Would it have been Moses? I believe that Joshua wrote this. Okay, but on, based on what tradition? Just oral tradition? Um, not necessarily oral tradition. I actually believe... Man, did you hear when I say that some people believe to the guy? Yeah yeah, 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 that Joshua wrote the ending of... Uh, so, the reason why I believe Joshua did write the ending, you know, chapters uh, of Deuteronomy um, is because... It's just logically we have to we have to accept that he did. In the book of Deuteronomy itself, it says that Moses placed his hands on Joshua and anointed Joshua to be able to do so. I think that's in chapter 34, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, to get away from that point, um, to get away from that point, uh, if we if we look at you take care. If we look at how it's, it's, it's ended, we can see that it's a it's a in about this thing, not actually Moses doing it. And I believe that that's actually the whole case throughout the whole book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. I don't believe Moses actually writ Deuteronomy personally. Mm -hmm. I don't believe he actually writ Genesis personally. The same with Jeremiah. Jeremiah didn't write the book of Jeremiah personally. He had someone that's known as a scribe that would write it. For example, when you read the book of Exodus and the rest of it, you see that Joshua was going up onto the Mount Sinai with Moses to basically watch what Moses was doing and write it down. That's, that's, what, the, that's what the Torah consists of. So you know this Torah, yeah? So we had the time of the book of Maccabees, so we know about the history. So you had the... What is, there was a strong Hellenization of the Jews in that region and they fought against this, that's why you had the Maccabean rebel, yeah? They lost their language, they lost their circumcision, they lost their Bible. Do you know, the degradation of it started before, but they lost their Bible and then in the time afterwards, when uh, they came into power, which is known as the Hasmonean dynasty, their, their, their Bible came back, it, it got translated into what is known now, now known as the Septuagint, because there were five scribes, one of the kings of Gregor's his name is, yeah? uh, five scribes from each tribe, which is something like 70, yeah, you get it, yeah? yeah it was chosen to uh, translate from the, so you had the original Hebrew, but from that, they translated into the uh, Greek, yeah, the Septuagint, yeah. But then thereafter, the Hebrew was lost forever. I actually don't, I actually and then the Hebrew you have now is based upon that Latin one. No, we, so... This no, it is, it is. I, I'm, not, I'm not asking. I, I, like, this I'm quite sure about. So then about. how would you... Mm. How, what, what would you say about the Dead Sea Scrolls? The Dead Sea Scrolls are from the same time period as the Septuagint, and it's the Hebrew version. But it's not a full... So the Dead Sea Scrolls, yeah, they're, they're a number of books. They're a number of books, yeah? There's only one book that's not in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's the Book of Esther. Uh, I, think, I think also um, the Shepherd of Hermes, is it? The Shepherd of Hermes? That's, not, that, that's a it? New Testament. That's a New Testament oral tradition. That's uh, not actually a part of the uh, No, it's not oral because it's part of the Septuagint that we have in the British. But okay, okay, that okay. Was, that granted. was added in after 70 AD. Yeah. That wasn't, it wasn't even written yeah. beforehand. So, yeah. for example, right? So, you, uh, let, me, let me just get uh, just straight. Right. You don't believe. What was he dressed like that? <laughs> you lot are confusing me. I swear all of you lot are confusing So, uh, you don't believe that you lost the original Hebrew at any time? Is that what you're saying? Um, no, at all, not at all. Because the Septuagint was written, they say, approximately 400 BCE, 300 BCE, right? And the Dead Sea Scrolls is the Hebrew version of that, and it was written in the same time period. So if we say... No, no, but they, 
That's a sorry to cut you. Yeah, when I when I, the reason I cut you is because Dead Sea Scrolls is compiled of many of them, all date carbon dating to different sp uh, dates. Uh, Do you get it? So when you say the Dead Sea Scrolls, yeah. When I say the Dead Sea Scrolls, I'm specifically referring to the 66 books, mm. which would be the Old Testament. Those. Well, even those were written at different times. They weren't. When oh, of course. Do, when you do the um, carbon, carbon dating, mm -hmm. they approximately range it around 400 to 300 BC. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The rest of the Dead Sea Scrolls, which mm -hmm. would be like communi the, the so. community. Guidelines, they're, they're oh, yeah, the community rule, yeah. That, that would be the ones that vary from, let's say, 300 BCE to the first mm. AD. Uh. That, that's what really varies in, in, uh. the, in the date. I'll, I'll have so, to double check that. But from what I understood from Jewish uh, scholars, was that the original Hebrew is lost. What they have is a uh, translated one from the Latin or the Greek one, sorry. That, that would, you would be talking about the Aleppo Codex. The Aleppo Codex. Frame, I'll have to double codex. check on that, but from what I understood. On the Masoretic text. There's a couple others. Yeah. Those specific yeah. ones, they take um, information from the Septuagint. So yeah, yeah, the, the Masoretic text, yeah. yeah. So maybe I have to check the, uh, the, the families, yeah, the families. So then, back to my question though. What's ah. the, the, the Muslims? They don't believe Jesus died and that. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so even, so it depends what approach we want to take when we answer this question so now when you say um, Jesus died if you say he's God then we say how can God die this is uh, I'm not debating I'm just saying many multiple reasons yeah there are early groups of Christians Christianities that didn't believe Jesus died like the Sertians, and they have their own Gospels like the Gospel of Peter is the one they use um, another one is uh, what John Dominic Cross and calls the cross gospel as well um, FF Bruce when he examines these Gospels he's a scholar he says all of these Ring, uh, ring with familiarity of the Quranic idea that Jesus was not killed nor was he crucified. So it can be explained from that perspective, but I'm still not doing that. Um, when you have Jesus on the cross here, yeah, he said, Lord, Lord, why do, that? why do you forsake me? Again, this doesn't sound like a tone of a prophet that was sent by God to do his bidding. It sounds like someone rebellious. Even from a theological, Christian theological point of view, the idea that God became man and then died and was there, crucified as and forsaken as he said why do you forsake me and he died as the death of a curse and he entered into the earth as Jonah was in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights so shall the son of man be in the belly for three days three nights that is just ridiculous idea if you think he's Jesus if you think he's just a prophet even this becomes uh, problematic because his plea was let this cup pass me by be it your will not my will him dying for sins, because this is what the, I, this is the reason you need a, a crucifixion, is to re remit us from uh, our sins, which wasn't done by you. It's the inheritance of the nature of sin by Adam. This idea that sin is, uh, you are burdened with sin because of someone else, is extremely unorthodox of Islam. Even Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, it says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. No man bear the sin of the father, and no son bear the sin of, uh, no man bear the sin of the father, and no son, the other way around. <laughs> so it's like, isn't it? how can someone die for your sin, which isn't a sin in the first place? So that's another argument, yeah? Um, if you look at it from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they all start contradicting themselves really, really badly at that point on. So, um, so for example, um, you have like um, the, historically the Sanhedrin, the, it violates what we have, the Sanhedrin in the Bible, or the described Sanhedrin in the Bible, it violates oh, almost 30 Sanhedrin or Mosaic laws. Example, the timing of it, yeah? They say this, some Christians try to say, oh, it's because it was a legal one. Unlikely, but let's say it is, for example, it was held in a house, the high priest's house, illegal. Held at night time, illegal. Held at Passover, the day before Passover, illegal. And there's, uh, there's so many others to make the story of the Sanhedrin either sound like they've done a legal uh, Sanhedrin, which is unlikely, yeah, or that day it didn't really happen. So they pilot. Now, every historical record we have of pilot is that he was merciless every record but then we have the pilot saying oh I wash my hands of the blood of Jesus and he gives him back to the Jews unlikely historical uh, behavior of Pilate he would not give it to the Jews and nobody washes his hands saying I am free of this man's blood he didn't care about a Jewish man from Nazareth um, it goes on to say uh, there, there's a story that there was a uh, that every year that the the the, the um, 
every year the habit of a pilot was to release a prisoner. No, it wasn't. I mean, that, that is actually a custom of the Jews. Mm -hmm. but, but yes, but not of Pilate. Not of Pilate. Well, so he frees, uh, he frees, uh, there's so many, this is what I'm saying. Even if we engage in one, it's like, I'm still left with the, yeah. Right. Barabbas, for example, uh, let me, tell me when you had enough of me. Yeah? No, no, I'm, I'm a listen. Yeah. Like Barabbas, like Barabbas. So now they say he frees Barabbas, a known rebel, a man who's murderer, and the crowd want Barabbas to go instead of Jesus. Barabbas means the son of the father. This is what Jesus is, the son of the father. It becomes uh, like, hold on, he's Barabbas, he's the son of the father as well. Jesus, yeah. So is this a play in words? Does this guy really exist? We had Joseph of Aramaeus, a figure we've never heard of, from Aramaeus, a place we've never heard of. We don't know where this Aramaeus is. Now it says he's from the Sanhedrin, the same hand Sanhedrin, which the Gospel says, all of them from the Sanhedrin condemned him. But then all of us in Southern Hebrew story and he wants to bury him. That Joseph of Aramaeus. And this is the only purpose of Joseph of uh, Aramaeus in the Bible. He serves no other purpose. He comes in unknown and he leaves unknown and the reason is is because he needs to provide a burial because if you have a burial then you can say that he did die if you can say he did die then he did die for your sins and it goes on more so this is what I'd say. like as in I, mean, I, 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 that I haven't even I haven't even you know what I mean yeah. and, um, there's so much more I think for me I don't believe Jesus is a substitu uh, substitution a substitution atonement I don't believe that mm -hmm. Um, my belief and the Bible, what the Bible literally says is that Jesus died because of wicked men. Meaning, the best way I can put it, let's say... Come a bit closer, man. I've not got uh, COVID. <laughs> let's say, um, I'm a bit sick. No, no, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. So, I'll, um, let you, I'll let you keep us safe. Of course, of course. Always keep us safe. So, mm. my understanding is actually this, that the wicked people that killed Jesus mm -hmm. weren't meant to do so, mm -hmm. but they did it anyway mm -hmm. because they follow their own heart. Mm -hmm. This means, and this is what Isaiah 53 says, this means that actually when they killed Jesus, this wasn't some enactment that uh, saves us from sin, it actually implicates us for sin. Mm -hmm. Killed a man. Mm -hmm. See that? Now we're implicated with killing an innocent, innocent man. Mm -hmm. So now that we're implicated of killing an innocent man, we now have to say, to get rid of that implication, we have to follow the teachings of that sinless man, or that man that we've killed for no reason. And this is what Isaiah 53 is actually talking about. When you read it in context, it says he was smitten, he wasn't looked upon as a good man, he would be killed by these wicked men. And after that, after that is when, it says after that, uh, uh, yeah. it says after that, you're welcome. For example, in, for example, in Romans chapter 6, that we, as, a, as we and me and you as living people, have to kill ourselves and live according to God. We have to kill ourselves and live the way that Jesus did. So it's not so much a substitution of atonement. Only God can forgive you. Mm. But the way God forgives you is if you follow the teachings of Mashiach so, and you so. follow how Mashiach walked. This is why he says he's the way, the truth, and the light. Mm. And that's the whole. But, thing. but the thing is, like for example, I am the way, the truth, and the light. But he says to the Father. Like yeah, you read the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I, I definitely agree. Like I, like I said, I don't believe. So you only believe in one God. Only believe in one. And you believe in the prophets. Yes. You don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad though? No. What's the reason? Do you have a standard of the, why you dismiss him? For me, mm. it's certain verses in the Quran. I think it's Surah chapter 5 verses 44 if I remember correctly. Mm. Muhammad actually adds to Torah. And um, according to Deuteronomy 18 and 18, Whoever, if yeah. anyone adds to Torah, or uh, even Isaiah 8 and 20. If anyone adds to Torah, that means they're not a prophet. So what about when Joseph, uh, jo jo uh, jo Joshua added to the end of Deuteronomy about Torah. Not oh, so you're talking about the... Evidence in it. So that's something that... We're going to have to flesh this out, yeah, out yeah. much, much more because... Yeah. Because I'm not too sure what it is you believe, but it's going to take a bit of time, yeah? I'll, I'll I'm here. I'll give you this last example, we'll, I'll come back to you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is the best way I can explain it. Torah is just a term that means law. Yeah, that's so right, that's right. Torah, yeah. it just means law. Mm. When we do a Talmudim, that's Talmud, the X, yeah? that's, no. See, that's what people think. Mm. Talmudim, 
is the explanation of Torah, of mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. For example, the law says, uh, um, what's it called? Don't, I'm trying to think of the best example. This is uh, it. Don't, don't, don't rob your neighbor. Why don't you rob your neighbor? Because if you do it, it happens to you. Mm. And if you rob your neighbor, you have to pay him back five more, 20% more. Or they say sometimes five, you have to pay five extra. And that would basically be the explanation of the Torah. So it's two, it's two different things. And then you would have the... When you, when, you told, when you tell an Orthodox Jew, you're a Jew, what do they say to you? About Torah and... Yeah. No, when you say you're a Jew to an Orthodox Jew. This is the last question, yeah? Oh, yeah. But I need to engage in... A... I was speaking to, uh, I forgot his name, but there was an Orthodox Jew over there. He just asked me oh, how you're Jewish. Or I told him I'm a Sephardic Jew. He asked me on your mom's side. I said yes. He asked me on your dad's side. I said yes. Where, where, are you, where do you descend from? Like which country? Um, obviously, like the... Spain. But Prior to family, Spain? My family would have obviously, through the Spanish Inquisition, went to Trinidad. Mm -hmm. That's where my family mm -hmm. grew up. Mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But how do you like, what's the root of that going back to Jerusalem or the tribes of Israel? Do you know? Yes, um, I actually don't know my specific tribe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We just know that we're Sephardic Jews. Uh -huh. um, we have a tradition of coming from Spain, uh, Portugal, not only Portugal, Morocco, Egypt, mm -hmm. and then Israel. Yeah. And that, that's up there. Yeah. So, Okay, listen, I'm all right. I need a rest now. I've been talking for a long time. I've, God bless you. Uh, yeah, God bless you as well, man. And uh, we will continue this discussion. We'll go more in depth off camera anyway. I'll give you fire, you give me fire, and we get out of here. And uh, we come to a truthful yeah. conclusion. Yeah, my man, my man. I thought you were Muslim all that time. You're halfway there. Uh, halfway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The halfway there. I just need to sort the inside out. <laughs> Must be tied up here, yeah, 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 I have to, mate. Oh, Allah, how long? Have a break, man. Oh.